So we can begin. Uh, we will soon have our song, if uh, Sonia is ready. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your presence and uh, for gathering us early in the morning from all over. There is people uh, from uh, different uh, provinces and countries and continent. And uh, we are so blessed to be uh, praying for each other, uh, to be uh, surrounded by the love of the Good Shepherd. And we want to open our hearts to his presence, his uh, loving presence, his gaze upon us, and uh, to be open to his eye, his way, the way he has to gaze upon us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Christ our King, thy kingdom come. Virgin most prudent, Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can begin with a song in kiss, Sonia is ready. Give us one minute. Nice. So we can uh, read again the text of the Good Shepherd, chapter uh, Psalm 23. I hope uh, this morning uh, you had uh, your coffee or something and, and that now uh, you are disposed uh, to uh, um, receive the word of the Lord. So, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I lack. In green pastures, he makes me lie down. To still waters, he leads me. He restores my soul. He guides me along a right path. For the sake of his name. Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, 
comfort me. You set a table before me in front of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for endless days. Probably at this point, the word of God in this Psalm 23 resonates better now. There is something that touched you yesterday in the way the Lord speak to you through this passage. As I was uh, praying and thinking about it uh, after I left you, there is some uh, details that came back to my to my heart and mind. So uh, we spoke yesterday about the Lord that is my shepherd. And uh, among the uh, different ways I had to prepare this retreat, I, uh, uh, I saw uh, a document about this, uh, she like an actual shepherd in Italy. And uh, he was sharing how uh, when he has a fear or uh, a preoccupation, uh, a concern, the, the sheep, they feel it. And so uh, they can know by the smell and uh, whatever is coming from the shepherd, they kind of detect it and they behave uh, in a way that is related to that. And so it speaks about a special connection between uh, you and Jesus. And so what you feel is not indifferent to him. What he feels is not indifferent to you. And you know how when, uh, uh, probably it happened to me, there's a lot of things I, think, I suppose it happened also to you. There's a lot of things that I am not sensitive to. I don't, uh, I don't detect. I don't uh, realize um, by myself. But I will see somebody else reacting, and then I will feel what the other or the other person feel, and then actually I will. Uh, uh, it will enter in my awareness to somebody else. And so when you have that connection uh, that is growing with a loved one, uh, because you know the person, uh, in our case with Jesus, it's very, very interesting because there is a whole uh, opening of emotions and, and um, connection with reality that escaped to us before, but like it, it open an all horizon uh, of the person. And it's, it's very good to be connected like that with Jesus uh, because there is something of the, you know, when Jesus in St. Matthew gospel, he sees the crowds and he's full of compassion in the deep of himself. And and because they are like a sheep without a shepherd. And there is, you know, at, at the school of Jesus, you, you may enter in that all uh, path of compassion because the Lord may want to use you to make present he is a mystery, he is person, he is event of himself, and his compassion, his 
reaching out to other is a um, revealing his heart he's a gathering people you know how the sheep they, they go around the, the 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 shepherd and and they perceive that he cares for them then it gives them trust and then uh, another um thought that came to me is about the still waters what is my still water for me uh, a key part a key aspect of my still water is that um, i need my hour of prayer in the morning i cannot miss that my like when i you know i close my door in my room and then uh it's just with the lord and uh it's an essential so i um so it's good to be attentive each one to what it is it, it won't be the same like not all mom can have that hour you know sometimes it's maybe a 10 minutes it, but it's that, that when is that quality time that still water where the water is not moving so i can actually drink like a ship like if the water is moving is no way she drinks she, she dies because there is no if you don't drink when there is sun in the desert and in those places that we saw yesterday on our p pictures then uh finally uh, I did, uh, uh, I began a small reading of the note five yesterday about uh, a, a scripture of Madame Guyon, uh, uh, a writing that is called the spiritual torrent. And there, uh, it's, uh, there's a, a point I wanted to insist on, uh, on the second kind of people the people that have that strong source of fonts that come from the mountains and then they form a river that will bring a lot of boats so on a, this kind of river they are not so strong as the third type that nobody can stop and go directly to the sea and no they can have a lock a lock uh, actually according to the dictionary because i'm not sure about my english word but it seems to be that kind of a dam right and that thing that stops the water so you you can have a lock and there is a risk is that Look, if you're on that call, a number of you, you have spiritual gifts. And a number of you, you are aware of it. Because life showed you and the Lord has been generous to you and you became aware. Then that could form a lock. Uh, where you could be stuck in looking at your gift without going over the lock to the sea that is to God to the one that gave you this gift and he gave them to you for you to arrive to him and for to bring many boats to him So now I would like to go uh, to the next uh, slides. Uh, I mean, I'm speaking about uh, uh, a picture that is coming up there. Exactly. So indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for endless days. 
uh, painting helped me a lot to pray and to uh, open um, my heart to new aspects of the mystery. In the States, uh, there was a uh, for a long period, there was a for a, a period there was a lot of paintings with sheep and shepherds. So that one is from Anton Move, the return of the flock. So I uh, I like I so I like the. Uh, there is something of a tenderness, uh, the, the small sheep that are there at the end, where you, f you f yeah, it's beautiful. At the same time, you know, there may be danger because they are a little bit behind the flock and the, the shepherd doesn't seem to be looking at them. And also uh, that sense of to be together appears a lot in that picture that that trust in the shepherd that we can see at the end of the picture and uh, they seem to know their past also as if it was something habitual that past where they go to return and uh, so it helped me to uh, to enter in that meditation because our passage uh, indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. Uh, there is that sense of um, uh, the word in the word pursue, pursue. There is that sense of a special presence. So, in the context of a shepherd, according to the commentaries. It speak about uh, when when you uh, return home after uh, it may be a long time out. Um, it's the end of the day. The sun is coming down, and then frequently even the shepherd will will walk behind, or he will have somebody else walk, be walking behind because it is a time when. Uh, you may feel uh, a bad presence, a danger. You know when you return home late and then you feel there is something? So there, it's an allusion of David, a shepherd, to that. But now speaking of the Lord, it's his goodness and his mercy, that presence that is near now and then to be touched by that by that kind of presence that is pursuing me as as soon as you enter in that spirit of uh, delight for the gift of the Lord uh, of recognizing how he fulfill what you like. How did you fulfill today what I'm lacking, my Lord? You know, asking the good question. <laughs> like, like you have been doing uh, uh, with your questionnaires and a little bit of your answers, and then uh, you see how he's uh, pursuing you to pursue. It, it makes me think about the Song of Songs, where the beloved uh, is a, um, per, where there is a pursuing of love. So, So uh, there is that insistence on uh, the goodness. The goodness uh, come by opposition to the evil of uh, the previous paragraph. So remember, 
um, of uh, that uh, there is no f fear of any evil. In the previous paragraph, we can we can see I will fear no evil. So that actual goodness of this verse uh, number six is a, a direct opposition to that other evil and it brings us back to genesis you know when everything what what was created was good and it was good and it was good and so you see a kind of, of like a redemption you know you had the creation the the my shepherd that relationship then you have the experience of evil and uh, that presence of the law that bring me to goodness so there is something that is reestablished when you enter in that relationship with a shepherd and it's, it's not that you uh, uh, arrive to uh, perfection by yourself but you put your heart on it you uh, as uh, you don't deny anything to the shepherd and then uh, even your fault uh, become uh, an experience of his mercy and you let him lead you to green pastures and, and still water and and then uh, his goodness and his mercy pursue you the mercy uh, we know it's i mean in a lot of translations that will come as a uh, love instead of mercy but it's a uh, the it's coming from the hebrew the hesed i'm not sure about my hebrew pronunciation so i'm sure you can correct me after uh because here people are very educated and that's uh, a challenge to arrive to that but uh, here uh um miss that that uh, that sense of uh the mercy uh it it bring to that uh um to that that attitude of the heart of jesus you know that attitude that we can find in uh, our text of uh, matthew 9:36 Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 At the sight of the crowd his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd then he said to his disciples the harvest is abundant but the laborers are few so ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest so um so i want to enter a little bit now with you uh, in in that passage of saint matthew chapter 9 verse 36 and uh, uh, because it's speaking for me to the goodness of the Lord and his mercy, he's pursuing. Uh, first, at the sight of the crowd. So the sight of the crowd, it's a, a quality of gaze that Jesus has on them. He has a quality of gaze. Uh, his gaze, I'm sorry if what, what I'm meaning is the way he look at people. This is what I mean when I say gaze. So his gaze already is doing so much. His gaze is transforming. At the sight of the crowd, his heart was moved with pity. So look at that goodness and that mercy 
in those words. His heart was moved with pity in this uh, chapter 9 of verse, verse 36 of Matthew. So he, his heart is moved with pity. What does that mean? To, to be moved, like in the translation and the meaning of the, the words uh, of that Greek uh, there, that would be uh, moved with pity in his heart. It means uh, something like viscera, in his viscera, in his bowels, uh, even a large translation would go to uh, in womb. That uh, um, So the, it, well, the emotion is registered deeply. You know, when it, it arrives to the abdomen, it's kind of an authentic emotion authentic so it's not a superficial compassion it, it, it is goodness and his mercy pursue me there is something of uh, uh, that is authentic in that care of the good shepherd for me that is transforming in uh, when you uh, receive accept that love it allows you to enter in that care and authentic compassion for others, you need to be loved first, and then so when, when, when it, you are actually loved first. So when you accept, when you don't deny, like Saint Benedict say, you know, <laughs> whatever he give you, he ask you that you enter in it, you you respond to his promptings, and then that multiply, that, that, uh, that allow uh, his uh, river of grace to flow on others and then to bring many boats to the sea of the presence of the Lord. So now uh, I want to, uh, now that we are on that slide, that's very good. So you can see, uh, uh, Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, we can go in the in the mercy. That's good. So, how happy I am to see myself as imperfect and so much in need of God's mercy at the moment of death. So, Therese of Lisieux, she's about to die. Uh, the little flower. And so, instead of being upset and in frustration for her limits and her, um, uh, how to say, her um, uh, sin, she rejoiced because of the opportunity to experience the mercy. We, so then uh, there is that insight of uh, Father Philip that I like a lot. You find everything in the references of the, there are some notes if you look for the books. Uh, he explained, we should ensure that examination of conscience doesn't degenerate into gazing gloomily at ourselves. You could enter in despair or, or no, no. You could be stuck in your luck or because of, of gazing gloomily at yourself or because of focusing too much on the gift you received. The best way to enlighten our conscience and discern our real sin is to look at God, to take his word as a mirror. So there you have that, uh, that phrase of Therese of Lisieux about uh, the prodigal son. I like it a lot. 
so it's a way you can see a what what do we mean with the mirror to look to use the word of god as a mirror yes i feel that even though i had on my conscience all the scenes that can be committed Jesus' arms because I know how dearly he loves the prodigal son who returns to him. So next slide, um, or you have it on your handout also. It, uh, there is a short conscience exam of a par paragraph. It's called for your consideration to keep growing um, exercise to you uh, that you could uh, take a whole week or one, three days to see how much it helps you. It's one, two, one more tool that has been very helpful for me like to allow that uh, place to my emotions and then to learn more how to read what the Lord is doing in what I feel and what, what I experience and in my day. So it make it more simple because it helped me to just take one uh, emotion or one thing of the day and then dialogue with the Lord about it. And, and so it, it helped me to see how his goodness and his mercy is uh, pursuing me uh presence your desire to pray indicates the presence of god so if you have that desire that's already a good step <laughs> that he's there the good shepherd then then uh you that all thing take three minutes you know review go through the events of your day so far let them come to mind without effort. What did you do? Whom did you meet? What happened to you? And it's not about when you do your examination. It could be before supper, if you are too tired later, you know, or after lunch, where you, you let that space. What happened to you? Then notice a feeling that have arisen within you. Express them to God. Take a moment and pray with feeling on a feature of your day that stands out. What might God have been showing you through that? So, uh, I, I, now we can go to the slide of the questions with uh, Tima. And uh, I, I'll let you go uh, through the question by yourself. And I see you at 8.40.